Video games are extremely popular in this day and age, but most games are only successful with the right kind of branding. Branding can make or break the success of your game, and often the ones that fail to market themselves properly to the public fade into obscurity. In today's episode, I'll take you through a list of 10 of the strangest examples of branding used to market video games. Number 10, Pepsi Man. While this Crash Bandicoot ripoff never left Japan, it gained notoriety internationally for its absurd art and full motion video of a sloppy American man who desperately craves Pepsi. The game takes place across famous American locales like San Francisco, New York City, and Texas, with a grand finale in the eponymous Pepsi City. Despite being only released in Japan, the game is entirely in English. This strange obsession with America and absurd tone didn't enthrall Japanese audiences. Pepsi Man did not sell well at the time and is viewed as a historical oddity today. Number 9. Fusion Fall Fusion Fall was concepted as an MMORPG set in a shared universe for the many characters and worlds of Cartoon Network's stable of shows. The game had a grittier, more mature tone to try to appeal to teens. After trying for four years to get the project up, the development of Fusion Fall started in April 2006. The game released in 2008 for Windows and represents an early vision of the shared transmedia narratives, or stories, which go beyond a single intellectual property and synergize multiple desperate stories into one. This technique can be seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and in the product placement within Fortnite. While the transmedia narratives of Fortnite bring together properties from all over entertainment, Fusion Fall's shared Cartoon Network universe was the first step in this direction. Number 8. The Sims 2 IKEA Home Stuff The Sims game enjoys a very healthy and committed fan base and a lot of bonus content release and expansion packs. IKEA Home Stuff was a pack released in 2008 for The Sims 2, which featured new furniture and decorations from the IKEA catalog with a particular focus on items for living rooms, bedrooms, and home offices. The items featured IKEA's iconic Swedish names, such as a sofa named Ektorp or a table named Lexvik. Due to the brand's cultural prominence in its home country, as well as a large population of committed gamers, this pack was the second best-selling game in Sweden for two consecutive weeks. Number 7. Spot the Cool Adventure Spot the Cool Adventure seems like a standard 90s product placement game, leaning on the era's colorful mascots and simple designs to make a simple platformer game for the Game Boy. In a unique twist, one company was hired to develop a McDonald's-themed platforming game for the European market called McDonald's Land. That game was actually re-themed with the 7-Up Cool Spot branding outside of Europe. Cool Spot wasn't the 7-Up's mascot in Europe at the time, Fido Dido had held that crown for years. This means Spot, the cool adventure slash McDonald Land, holds the unique title of being the only licensed game for two different brands. Number 6, Yo Noid. Originally released in Japan as a standard platformer game called Cayman No Ninja Hanamaru, the game was rebranded for its American release to promote the Noid, a mascot for Domino's Pizza. The Noid was a physical manifestation of all the challenges inherent in getting a pizza delivered in 30 minutes or less. While the game was released in 1990, a year earlier, a man with the last name Noid believed that Domino's was specifically targeting him and held several employees hostage. While nobody was hurt, this incident led to the quiet sunsetting of the Noid as a mascot, which might explain why the Yo Noid was just a rebrand of an already completed game from Japan instead of an original product. Number 5. Captain Novalin While many mascots of brands got their own game in the 90s, Captain Novalin was different. He's not the mascot for a soda or a pizza place, but instead he's the mascot for Novalin brand insulin. While not designed to sell something specifically, Captain Novalin was sponsored by Novo Nordsick who produces Novalin Insulin and the National Institutes of Health. Designed to assist children in learning about diabetes and how they should manage the disease, Captain Novalin must avoid junk food and eat healthy meals to keep his glucose in a safe zone. While it was received positively by children and doctors, when it was released widely, it was met with very negative reviews from the game-playing public. Number 4. Garfield Go When Pokemon Go took the world by storm in 2016, some other brands got the hint. 
Combining a universally beloved franchise with augmented reality, location-based gaming should be a surefire hit, right? Enter Garfield Go. The famously lazy and apathetic orange cat is now the face of a full ripoff of Pokemon Go. Instead of throwing Pokeballs at cute creatures, you're throwing lasagna into Garfield's bowl. Instead of capturing all your childhood favorites and making a team of cool Pokemon, you're collecting rare Garfield comics from the 80s with fedoras for Garfield to wear. Instead of a gym to do battle with your rivals, you go to bistros to get more food for Garfield. At best, Garfield Go is an ill-conceived cash grab. It's still available on the App Store and Google Play. Number 3. America's Army America's Army is a series of first-person shooter video games developed and published by the U.S. Army, intended to give a positive view of Army service and recruit gamers to enlist as soldiers. According to Army subcommittee testimony, America's Army has a higher chance of recruiting than any other method of contact. While the concept of a realistic war game made by soldiers themselves is alluring to many gamers, the game contributes to militarization of society and befets real criticism of the military while contributing to our military-industrial complex. Using a video game in high schools as a recruiting tool aimed at children has been widely criticized. America's Army is a broader genre of military-sponsored propaganda games like Glorious Mission, developed for People's Liberation Army of China, and Hunting Yankee, a North Korean sniping game. America's Army enjoys popularity to this day, with a new title in the franchise due out soon. Number 2. Sneak King After meeting at the Cannes Film Festival, advertising executives from Microsoft and Burger King agreed that a cross-promotion between the fast food joint and the console manufacturer would serve both their brands well. Investment began to pour in with the Blitz Game Studios taking over development. Steve Bannon, founder of Breitbart News, chief strategist of President Donald Trump, and far-right provocateur, was also an early investor in the development of Sneak King. While the game released to poor reviews, it sold far beyond anyone's expectations. It shifted more than 2 million units and was among the top 10 best-selling games of 2006. Burger King had a 40% increase in sales during the quarter of Sneak King's release. Number 1. Darkened Sky Originally conceived as a more adult game to make Skittles more appealing to older audiences, this GameCube action game starred a young woman named Sky who lives in a fantasy realm and must find her mother. Sky can perform magic using Skittles candy she collects. Skittles are the player's primary means of interacting with the world around them, and they play a key role in the story. Strangely enough, due to a prolonged development cycle, Dark and Sky had all references to Skittles completely removed from its packaging and marketing materials. A player who saw the box at the store and thought it looked like a fun fantasy adventure would be flummoxed to discover the integral role that Skittles play in Sky's quest to save the world. Thanks so much for watching this video. Go ahead and like this video, comment down below, and hit that subscribe button.